few deeds. So for me, this ver before this verse, there were a few verses I felt became uh, foundational verses for a strong vertical relationship with God, even before I obey this verse. That is uh, entering the new and living way uh, by denying my will and having a full assurance of faith and keeping clean conscience and holding fast the confession of my hope without wavering. Uh, without doubting God's love, uh, having a solid foundation of God's love. Once I have this strong vertical relationship with God, God's word commands me to go and consider how to stimulate one another to love and good, and good deeds. Uh, as, uh, as it is written in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we all have some good works to do. God has kept some good works for each one of us to do in our lives after we are saved. Uh, Ephesians 2 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we, wo we would walk in them. I looked up this word, stimulate. In some versions it says, it says stir up or provoke. Uh, I was thinking about this verse in the past. How are my actions? Did my actions provoke love or provoke jealousy or anger in others? Uh, this word stimulate also reminds me about this uh, uh, thing called catalyst in chemical reactions. Anyone who has studied chemistry will know, knows how a catalyst works. It can cause something to happen or something to happen quickly. Uh, a little act of kindness or love can have a long-lasting impact on others. We could be starting a chain reaction of such acts of love and good deeds among the people that God has kept in our lives. I believe we all have a small little world that is so unique to each one of us with a unique set of people God has placed in our lives, be it uh, starting with our family, in the church, in the workplace, in the neighborhood. Last week I was reading this uh, news, <clears throat> I think some of you also read about it. Um, there was a <clears throat> case where, uh, this was a murder case where one police officer killed an uh, unarmed person in his own home. And uh, in the courtroom after the judgment was announced after many years, uh, many days of trial, the brother of the victim was killed. He came back, he came up and he openly forgave the officer who killed his own brother and even hugged her and hoped for the best in her life. That act of forgiveness, that act of kindness brought tears in those who were watching, including the judge. The judge even ended up sharing, the, sharing her own Bible to that uh, officer and also shared the gospel message, message pointing to John 3.16 to that officer. I'm sure many who have watched would have been touched by that act of love and forgiveness. Um, I felt uh, practically how, the, how does it apply in my life for this verse. I want to start this, uh, obeying this verse in my own family first towards my wife and children by first appreciating what they do good and encouraging them in doing even better. Recently, uh, in, relation, in relation to the discipline uh, that I do to my children, the Lord was reminding me about this verse in Ephesians 6, 4. It says, especially to fathers, fathers do not provoke your children to anger. So instead of provoking them to love, I can provoke them to anger, there is a danger. So if I'm not careful, with my words, with my actions, I can provoke my children to anger and discouragement. So in my home, I want, first want to be, a, be having an attitude of servant, being patient, speaking words full of kindness and compassion, and words of faith and encouragement. That will cause them, uh, that, through that I can, I believe I can stimulate uh, them also to love and uh, to good deeds. Um, now I request Brother Bobby to come and share on the MUS. Hebrews 10.24, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Um, similarly to what we heard, one of the ways that I've been personally stimulated uh, is by the example of others and the fruit that the other people have, godly people that have gone ahead of me, that have produced in their lives. And um, one verse I think alludes to that is Hebrews 6.12 that says, be um, imitators of those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. So when I see somebody that's inherited a promise in the Bible that has gone through the 
the, the hard school of affliction and trials and perseverance and they were faithful to the Lord and they prayed and they came through inheriting the promises. That's one of the greatest things that stimulated me. And for example, one area that um, had, this has greatly stimulated me was whenever I see older um, children, late teens or something, who are really godly or early young that have, uh, are following the Lord, I, uh, and I get a chance to meet their parents, I have a habit of just asking them, do you have any advice for young parents? Uh, and it's funny that almost all of them have at least two of the same things that they've told me. One is, it wasn't us, it was God. They gave God the credit. They said, we made so many mistakes. And then the other one was, we prayed for them. And I think that has been the thing that's greatly encouraged me, stimulated me the most to pray forever for my children, uh, to see how that has uh, people that have gone on and seen the fruit of their lives. Uh, they inherited those promises through faith and patience, but prayer. And so um, I think that stimulated me. I've read books on prayer and I've collected prayer quotes and all that, but seeing a godly life um, and the, the fruit of it and promise that was inherited, that stimulated me the most. Uh, and so I'm thankful for um, the stimulation. I hope to be, a, a stimula to be able to stimulate others as I inherit and press on for God's promises.